So David Spears, civil engineering instructor at Texas Tech University, talking about static CE 2301. We're in chapter 8, specifically 8.5, Moore Circle, which we have learned is a graphical presentation of rotated axes, rotated coordinates, rotated moments of inertia. And so that's what we're going to use Moore Circle for, and it presents everything all in one clear um, picture for us to comprehend and see the relationships between things. As I said, it's used for all these things, inclined axes and the moments of inertia associated with them and the principal axes, which are the maximum and minimum moments of inertia. So we've been using an example on the other two videos of this rectangle that's three by four. And we computed earlier that Ix, the moment of inertia about the x-axis, is 64 inches to the fourth. IY, 36 inches to the fourth, and the product of inertia is 36 inches to the fourth also. There's the brief calculations for it. Also, we worked out using the equations method that the angle, at the angle of rotation of 40 degrees, or theta is equal to 40 degrees, positive, which is what just, we just rotate our axis like this, by a 40 degree angle then we get a moment of inertia about the U and the V axis as we computed using the formulas of 16.98 and 83.02 for IU and IV respectively the product of inertia of IUV was 20.04 that came from the equation method Next video, we looked at the principal angle of rotation to get to the maximum and minimums. And the formula for that worked out to be, we worked out for 2 theta p, but we divided that by 2 to get negative 34.38 degrees. Remembering that positive angles are clockwise rotation, that left us with an angle that is going kind of get, to get all jumbled up. I would rotate my axis to get my minimums and maximums, something like this, and maybe like that, and where that's that negative 34.38 degrees. Once again, I used formulas to determine these values, and now I want to tie it all together with Moore's circle. So. Remember the first step, well you first you want to get your graph paper and plot the product of inertias on the vertical axis, the moment of inertias on the horizontal axis, and then you want to plot your points that you know from your IX and IY coordinate system. Those are, so we know 64 and 36 for IX, IY, so I plot that point right here. I don't really have my circle drawn yet. I've taken the liberty of doing that in advance, so my circle is beautiful. And I plot IY, which is 36, and negative IXY down here, 36 and negative 36. And then I draw a diagonal. Then I note that my center is at the halfway point between IX, it's really the average of IX plus IY, 64 plus 36, divided by 2 is 50. So my center is right here in the middle along the, the horizontal axis. My center is right there, and it is at 50. I'm not going to write that its vertical co uh, coordinate is 0 because it's on the x-axis on the horizontal axis. So, next thing I want to do is compute my radius, which I can do by the geometry of this circle that I've got now. I would then draw my circle to the best of my art drawing ability, and then I would see this triangle right here that I can know the dimensions of, and I can see that it's the it's that's the radius that I want r, and it is the this length right here, 
in the horizontal direction is 64 minus 36, or IX minus IY, which is 28, divided by 2 gives me the center of that distance of 14. I square that and add it to the height, which is 36, which is just IXY. Square it, take square to the, some of the squares. I get that my radius is 38.63. Now, I'm kind of going to do the second part first, which is compute my maximum and minimum moments of inertia. To get max, I max, I just add the radius distance to the center point. The center is at 50, and I add 38.63, my radius, to it, and I get 88.63. And that is over here on the x, on the horizontal axis. So that's I max, and that's 88.63. I minimum is computed by the center minus the radius, minus the radius. So it's 11.37. That's located over here. on this edge of the circle where it crosses the uh, horizontal axis. My angle 2 theta p, which is the angle from one axis, Ix, to the principal axis, which is uh, for the moment of maximum moment of inertia, is this angle right here. That's 2 theta p. And I can calculate it by the relationship that's the opposite over the adjacent which is the tangent of that angle and so I take the tangent inverse of that number 36 divided by keeping my signs correct 36 minus 64 it is really negative uh, 14 36 minus 64 is negative 28 divided by 2 is negative 14, so I get my tangent of 2 theta is negative, or 2 theta p is equal to negative 68.75 degrees. Divide that in half, and I get my angle of rotation on my principal axis is negative 34.38 degrees. Now I want to compare that, of course, with the values I got from my equations. Sure enough, from the equations I got the same numbers. Theta P is negative 34.38 degrees, I max and I min are 88.63 and 11.37. So those two agree. Now I want to go on and go back to my first example, which was really the angle of rotation of 40 degrees positive or counterclockwise. So I said theta was 40 degrees, so 2 theta is 80 degrees. That's what I got to translate for translate it into for more circle is I've got to change my angles by doubling them. So that's 80 degrees. So I want to take a we'll try to draw this on here. My angles, my graphing isn't very good, so it's not going to be exactly beautiful. But now I know I've what I've tried to draw there is, from the x-axis radial line, I've tried to draw an angle of about 80 degrees. But I'll, my numbers will work it out directly. So there's my 2 theta is equal to 80 degrees rotation from the x-axis in the, uh, or i-x-axis, in the uh, uh, counterclockwise positive direction. So that leaves me with this unknown angle over here that I want to know, but I can easily figure it, what is that angle? Um, that angle is 180 minus these two angles that I know, 68.75 and minus the 80 degree angle. So that makes that angle 31.25 degrees. Pretty neat, eh? Then, 
I know it, I can see a triangle here that I can figure out the values of. Draw myself a green triangle right here that looks like that. Along the horizontal axis, I have this dimension, which is the radius. 38.863 63 degrees, 63, times the cosine of that angle, because it's the adjacent leg. So that means that length is 33.02. Along the vertical axis, the length of this vertical side of this triangle is the radius times the sine of 31.25 degrees. So that works out to be 20.04. So this number is 20.04. So now I can compute IU as the, which is the value of, for the moment of inertia in about the U axis, which is this, core, I want to compute the coordinates of this point right here. That is IU and IUV. Okay, IU is the center, 50, minus this distance, 33.02, or 16.98. The vertical component is just IUV, which is this leg here, 20.04. And similarly, I can go over, knowing that I have similar triangles over here, I also have a green triangle over here that's like that, that takes me to this point, where that's once again 33.02. In this case, I'm going to add it to the center, which is 50, so I get 50 plus 33.02 gives me the coordinates of this point. This is I V I negative I U V and that is like I said 50 plus that horizontal distance along the moment of inertia axis of 83.02 and negative my opposite angle of my opposite leg of my triangle 20.04 which is IUV 20.04 check that with the values I got by uh, equations if for the 40 degree angle of rotation I get the same values 1698, 8302 and 2004 so that's the beauty of Moore's circle it presents it all in one location and I can through a little geometry and triangles, uh, I can figure out any uh, moment of inertia or product of inertia for a given shape.